Hi there, my friend and friends. Somehow I've made over 700 videos here on YouTube, most of them about CSS, and I haven't made a just let's cover everything about positioning video yet. I mean, I've looked at position relative and absolute. I've explored different things with position sticky. I've probably touched on position fixed at one point, uh, but I haven't done sort of a crash course look at all of them to compare them and look at the differences and just understand how all of them work in one single video, which seems like a huge oversight. So we're here to fix that oversight today. And this is going to be a deep dive. So we're going to be looking at position static, position relative, position absolute, position fixed, and position sticky. And we're not just going to do a brief covering of what each one of them does, but we're going to be looking at how they actually work when we're dealing with actual content on the page, not silly examples. We're going to see how they influence other things on the page. When we put it on one element, what happens to the other stuff around it and how we can harness each one, how we might actually want to use any of these within actual like real examples of, of stuff. And we'll also talk about some of the gotchas that can come up along the way with each one of them as well. So if that sounds good, well, let's jump right into it. And we're going to be doing that by looking at this demo that I have right here. Uh, we're going to be playing around with this a little bit um, where you can see I have this main area that's set up uh, here, or we have a header across the top, actually a main area. And of course, this little uh, sidebar um, thing that's right here. And we're going to be playing with all these different pieces. And the first thing we're going to be doing is talking about, let's just go on this uh, page title here, just so we can see what we're working with. So I'm gonna select that with a page title class and let's give it a background color just to make it stand off a little bit. We're gonna say, um, we'll do a Rebecca purple so we can see it and maybe a color of white on there. But there we go, it's right there. And the first thing we're gonna look at is a position of static. And position static, you don't really see used too often just because this is the default, <laughs> right? So we don't normally have to bother declaring a position of static on something. Uh, the only time that this might actually come up is if you have a different position and then you know maybe you used a position absolute or something like that, and then you're using a media query and you need it to go back to the default behavior, then we could uh, declare a position static, but it's really not too often that you'll actually see this because it just means things are in the regular flow and it works. You scroll the page, the content scrolls, everything works the way you'd expect it to uh, if you never declared anything. And that also means things like, you know, top one rem <laughs> won't do anything. Or I could say top, you know, 50 pixels or whatever it is, the top, the bottom, the left, the right properties, they don't do anything. We also have Z index. That's not going to do anything. This is just, we're in default land. And so yeah, that's position statics, the nice and easy one. Uh, where things get a little bit different is when we come in with position relative. And position relative, if I hit save now, nothing's going to change. It seems to be exactly the same, but there is a big difference. And actually just to show us, I think it's gonna highlight a little bit better how this works. I'm gonna switch uh, from the H1 that I had my page title here. We're gonna switch over to this text down here, which is my article title. Uh, that's right there, my H2 of the article title. So let's come in my selector and let's just change the page title to article title. And we're just gonna switch things over. So now this has the purple on it, nothing too fancy yet. Uh, and again, if I take this position relative off, nothing changes, it's gonna behave exactly the same way. I can put that back on, we haven't made a change. But now if I come in and I say top 100 pixels, it's actually going to influence where it is on the page. And uh, let's also add a left of 100 pixels in here as well. And what this is doing is what well, we're moving it down by 100 pixels and we're moving it to the left 100 pixels from where it was originally positioned in the regular flow. You know, where did it start we're, when we had no positioning on it? Now we're moving it 100 pixels down and 100 pixels over. The important thing with position relative though, when we are using our top and our left is you'll notice that it's leaving that big empty space there and we're actually going on top of other content. So we're visually moving it, but the other content isn't really aware that it's been taken out of the flow and that we've moved it around. So the original space is always maintained and this is often, if you need some overlapping content, sometimes this is a way that we can do it where we just need to like shift something up for visual purposes. Uh, but it's not too often that we actually see any of this used. There are a few other reasons we'll use position relative, but one important thing is it also makes Z index come into play. So we can throw a Z index on there and we're gonna circle back to Z index in a little bit. Um, but it just means now we can start sort of stacking content and, and reordering things. Uh, and just as an example, you can see this is on top of my sidebar right here. Uh, so I guess we can bring that into play 
by coming down and that's my aside that's right here. So I can go and select my aside. So we can do that aside. And so I'm gonna do a position of relative. So we open up the world of Z index. And then I'm gonna say that this has a Z index of two on there. And it's gonna come because this number on this Z index is bigger than this Z index. You can see that that's now come in front. So we open up this world of layering. Uh, there's a lot more. This is Z index is the world of stacking context and not positioning. So I don't want to go too deep into it, but it is important to know that when we use things like position relative or fixed and all of that, that we're opening up that world of being able to change the order of things. Uh, but it can get a little bit more complex. But at a simple level, I think that's easy enough to understand how that's working. So let's remove that because we don't really need that on that little sidebar for now. And the next thing we're going to look at now, because that's basically how relative works, um, there is another thing with it that we're gonna circle back to, but uh, and it's coming up soon, but the next one we're gonna look at is position absolute. And you're gonna see a very big difference when I do position absolute. See how all of the content just moved? And the reason that this happened is when we use a position of absolute, we're pulling it out of the flow of the document. And unlike relative, where it sort of reserved that space where it originally lived, even when we move stuff, as soon as I do a position absolute, even if I don't have a top and a left on things, it's pulled out of the flow and the rest of the content pretends it's not actually there. It's, it's this new world that it's living in and everything else is completely ignoring it. You can see it's even like the size of it's completely changed and everything. It's not even respecting the width of that, you know, the, the main content that it was in before. Uh, it's now taking up a lot of room. The other thing that's different is when I have my top and my left here, this top and left are no longer relative to where it was originally in the flow. So you'll notice here, actually, let's just take off the left. Uh, I'm gonna, if we do a top of zero, it's going to go all the way to the top of the page. Now I have some margin on there. So let's just say margin of zero. <laughs> so we get rid of all the space um, and we can see that it's touching the top of the, the viewport now. And I said, I have some margin on there. I never put any margin, but all of you know headings and paragraphs, they all have a default margin top and bottom. So I'm just removing that. So now my top of zero is actually touching the top of the viewport. And that's very important to know is when we use position absolute, like now if I say bottom of zero, it's going to the bottom. <laughs> and you can see it's there at the bottom. Now it's not the bottom of the page. This top, the bottom, the left and the right, they're all relative to the nearest containing block, which by default is going to be your viewport. So a bottom of zero is the bottom where the viewport ends. But then if I scroll, it scrolls along and scrolls out of the page with it. So it still acts, you know, as, as far as scrolling and like all of that goes, it still acts like a regular element, but it's pulled out of the flow and I can sort of position it anywhere I want. So I could say bottom of zero, uh, then I could say left of 100 pixels and a right of 100 pixels. And uh, I know it's under my head a little bit, so let's get myself out of the way. But now I have 100 pixels on the left, 100 pixels on the right, um, and then I'm at a bottom maybe of, I don't know, 100 pixels off the bottom as well. Uh, and then you can see it's created that gap there uh, at the bottom. And again, that's before I scroll relative to the viewport. Now, I keep saying relative to the viewport, uh, but I mentioned that containing block word before. And the reason I mentioned that was right now, this article title is living inside of this article with sidebar. So let's grab that article with sidebar and we're gonna do a, uh, bring that in <laughs> as my selector. And then we're going to do a position of relative on here, relative. And this is going to disappear. It's gone. <laughs> and that's because this has now become the new containing block. And this is another, I mentioned we were going to come back to relative and this is why, uh, because position relative, not only is it used for positioning things, but as soon as a parent or an ancestor element has a position on it other than static, so other than the default, so it could be a fixed, it could be a sticky, it could be an absolute, it could be a relative, any of those positioning things declared on any, because this isn't the direct parent, it's another level deep, uh, that becomes the containing block instead of the viewport. So now, if we go all the way down, uh, and that's because <laughs> it's not the very bottom of the page, just because I had more content, I have a second article down here. So the end of this article, so where this article is ending is where this is, and you can see this is the title for the next one. So we're 100 pixels up, 100 pixels to the left, and 100 pixels to the right of this article here. And you know what, let's make it easier to see. We'll put a border of five pixels solid red on there <laughs> just so we can actually uh, see what we're looking at. So we have 100 pixels from the bottom, from the left, and from the right. 
So if I came back up and we said here, instead of bottom, this is top. It's not going to be top of the viewport. It's going to be top 100 pixels from this red border that we see there because it's now looking at the article title as its parent. And usually with position absolute, this is the type of thing that you're actually going to be doing. It's very rare that you want a position absolute element positioned absolute to the entire viewport. Uh, it can become very cumbersome, especially if you're getting into like trying to make a responsive design or something like that. We don't want to create a layout using positioning. Usually it's when we need a certain element, usually for decorational purposes or something, but we need something very specific in a very specific place. But we want that relative to another element so we can control the positioning of that other element and that's going to influence where like our sub element is if that makes sense so i would say like in general position absolute is a bit of a last resort it's not something you'd want to use on a regular basis uh, but if you would want to see a video where i do talk about position absolute and using it to create a responsive layout or within a responsive layout um, to avoid the pitfalls you can run into when using it uh, there should be a card popping up and i'll put a link in the description as well um, the, for a video that looks at that. Um, it's a bit more of a practical way, I guess, to be using position absolute, but in general, avoid it unless you really need it. I think that's the, the best uh, general rule, you know, when you need to pull something out of the flow, because that has a very big impact and generally we want to avoid doing that. But again, there are use cases where um, it can be important, but think everything else, you've tried grid, you've tried flex, all of these things aren't working. Okay, I need this one thing uh, to go in this one very specific place that's out of the flow. Then we come in and we use position absolute. Now, another thing that's important with position absolute um, is if normally we're putting things that are block level elements. So let's just take all of these off for a second. Um, and you'll notice that the element, if I take off the position absolute here, the element is a block level element. So it's going to take up the, the width of the area that it's inside of. Um, if something is, or actually it's just, we're going to make the text shorter here because it's going to highlight better what's happening. So we can come here and let's just do, we need, we need <laughs> is our new title. Um, and so here we have, we need by itself, but it's a block level element. So by default, even though the text is short, it's taking up a lot of room. And what we're going to do now is on this, we need that's, you know, we can come here uh, and let's do a position of absolute. And you're going to see that it also gets a lot smaller. Uh, just because position absolute elements, they're not really block level elements anymore. <laughs> they're pulled out of the flow and they're going to match the size of the content that is inside of them, assuming there's no wrapping going on. If they're too long, they will still wrap around um, as we saw earlier. But just to say like this is one of those important differences that does happen. The elements do shrink down. So sometimes if you're not expecting that, just it can be a little bit awkward. So just letting you know that that does happen. Um, and then, of course, you can add width and height to these if you need them. Width is 50%. 50% of what? 50% of its containing block. <laughs> so as soon as we do this position absolute, everything is all the top, bottom, left, right, width, height, all of those things are about the containing block that it is inside of, which we're generally doing with a position relative on one of the ancestors. But again, this could be any position other than static. So if I turn off the position relative here, the containing block goes back to the viewport. You can see the width is actually slightly changed. <laughs> no, though not very much, but now we're looking at the entire viewport instead of at the red box. The other thing with position absolute uh, that I didn't mention is that index does still work. So we can still layer things up and down if we need to. Uh, but again, I don't wanna go too far into the world of Z index in this video. I just wanna talk more about positioning. Uh, and for this next one, actually, we're going to, let's just comment all of this out. Uh, and we're gonna move our attention over to our sidebar over here, because I wanna look at position fixed and position sticky now. And these ones are kind of weird. <laughs> um, position fixed is the original one we had. Uh, we could also, we'll look at doing this. Actually, we'll start with our, our header and then we'll move on to the sidebar. And so let's go and select that. So we're gonna select the primary header. And on there, I'm going to say that this has a position of fixed and there's some similarities with the um, position of fixed and uh, a position of absolute. And one of them you can see right now uh, is that just like position absolute, when we did it on the we need, it shrunk down to fit the content. The same thing happens when we use position fixed. So my primary header was a display block before. So it was just automatically taking up all the room. And when I did a position of fixed, it shrinks all the way back down and it breaks things. <laughs> so the first thing we want to do is then bring back the width of 100% to make it take up the full width that we originally had. Uh, 
Interestingly, instead of a width 100% here, you could just say that it has a left of zero and a right of zero, and that would also work. Um, you can combine width, you know, you could give a left and right of zero to give it that space and give it a smaller width as well. It gets into like a little bit of the fringes with that. There's cool stuff you can do with it, but it's a little bit, um, it's, you know, it's not the beginner friendly <laughs> stuff. I don't, and I don't want to get into confusing situations. So just either one of those will work and give you the full width you want. Of course, we're not right up against the top of the page anymore either. So we can come in here and say we have a top of zero and it's gonna move it um, up to the top of the page as well. And just like when we are using position absolute, there's more than one similarity. Uh, you can see the other content is now ignoring it like it's not on the page and it's moved up into the area uh, where that used to be because this title that is right here that we can't read it doesn't know that that position fix thing is there basically it's going it doesn't see it so it just fills up into that space and the big thing that position fix does is this where when i scroll it's fixed to the viewport and this can be very useful for creating things that are fixed to the viewport and that scroll along with you there is obviously a downside where you get these types of things that happen and this used to be very hard to solve, or not hard to solve, but annoying to solve. We had to add like padding back to the page or margin top to the page uh, that matched the height of your navigation so that content wouldn't go underneath it like this. We're gonna see there's easier solutions now. Um, but yeah, pos position fixed in terms of headers, I wouldn't really use it for that anymore. Uh, the one thing maybe is like, you know those social sharing things you get on WordPress sites and like blogs and stuff? If you really need to have those, your client really wants it, um, you're probably getting a widget that does it automatically for our WordPress site, but something that fixes it to the viewport. So as you're scrolling around, it, it never moves. Um, it could also be one of those scroll to top buttons that you have. So when you scroll down, you have a button that's sort of bottom left, you click it, it brings you back up to the top of the page. Something that just stays with the viewport no matter what's going on. The important thing with position fixed is it's always fixed to the viewport. There are times where that's not actually the case, but almost every time you use it, you'll have it as something that is fixed to the viewport itself uh, and you're not changing the containing block. So as an example, let's change this. Uh, we'll take these off for a second and we're gonna move this onto the aside, which is this guy here that we were looking at before. And you can see it's position fixed and I've sort of broke my entire layout by doing that because this now <laughs> that I was using for the rest of my layout doesn't see it anymore. So the sidebar is basically vanished. This is position fixed. So it's come out into its own flow and it scrolls along with the page. But I just wanted to show that like, even though we have a containing block, that's this red box that's going all the way around, right? Cause that has, oh, we took off the position relative. We'll put it back on there just to show you that it doesn't do anything. So now if we put this back on, we are gonna be all the way at the top of the page. We're escaping out of the containing block. Uh, and if you do, if you're thinking I need something that's fixed, but within another element, again, there are weird sort of hacky ways that you can make a fixed element actually get stuck inside of something, but it's also generally gonna make you lose that fixed thing where it scrolls along with the page like this. So uh, yeah, you generally want to avoid that type of thing. Position fixed, you definitely don't want it for regular content like we have here. It's really used for very small things that you just need that never move and they're always locked into that one spot as the person scrolls and it's just always there. We're gonna switch this back on over to my primary header though <laughs> because what I wanna look at now is the alternative to fixed which is sticky and sticky solved so many of our problems. The first one being, Look at that, we've gotten our, 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 this is no longer hiding underneath that. And sticky is this weird like middle ground type positioning thing we have where until the element sticks, and we're gonna explore more what I mean by sticks, but bef until the element sticks, it's a regular block level element basically. So it's just gonna, it's gonna live in the flow, it's gonna behave exactly how it was if we had no position on there whatsoever. So it's like we never declared anything, but as soon as it sticks, then it turns into a fixed element. And you can see actually it's going below everything else. So let's come in here. Once again, we have Z index, same with the position fixed. We have a Z index. Um, so I can do just a higher Z index to make sure it's not below everything else because that's kind of awkward. And now you can see it's going in front of my other content. Um, and so we have the navigation stuck to the top of the page. That's not really awkward because we're not having to worry about content going underneath. 
The other time this can actually be kind of interesting is sometimes you have these things, right? You have like a hero section and then you have the navigation after. So here, uh, I'm just gonna throw in an H1, you know, hello world, something like that. And we have my dot hero is going to have a height of 70 viewport height, let's just say. So it's really big. And we have the navigation down here. Usually there's a big image, there's other stuff going on. But why this is cool is, remember I said that it's re it scrolls like it's a regular element until it sticks. So that's exactly what's happening. You have your big hero area here with a nice big image. It looks really cool. Then you get to your navigation and your navigation just sticks and it's awesome. <laughs> it works really, really well. Now, just importantly here, the top here is really important and there's ways of using bottom as well, but the bottom thing is kind of funky in how it works. Um, but let's just start with the top here and do a hundred pixels from the top. And this is just how far away from the viewport will it be when it sticks. So when it's 100 pixels from the top, it will stick. This could be technically a negative value as well, and all these can, can use negative values. Um, and it, that just means that it's going to be like 10 pixels up, so we're actually like losing part of it. I mean, I'll do like 25 here, um, just so we actually see that it's getting lost a little bit, and I wouldn't really do something like that because it's kind of weird. <laughs> Maybe you have a use case for that type of thing though, but. Uh, just on a navigation, if you really need that sticky header, um, you know, even if it's, you know, I'm doing it again, we have this set up, but even without that hero area, uh, to me, it's, it's worth doing if you need a sticky header instead of using position fix, just cause it means we don't have to worry about the content after. There is a thing with position sticky though, that's kind of weird. So I'm going to take this one off and we're going to go back to our side. And this is one of those problems people run into and one of those gotchas. Uh, so let's do a position sticky and we're going to say a top of zero and with position sticky it doesn't revert it doesn't like shrink down the way the fixed and the absolute did so i didn't really need the left and the right here um it wasn't it wasn't achieving anything you're generally just saying either stick to the top or bottom and 99 percent of the time it will be the top but when i do this you're going to see it's not going to stick and i'm going but i have a position sticky i have my top zero why is it not sticking to the top of my viewport and the reason that's happening is here in my article with sidebar, if we go and find it, which is way up because I was hiding it away, uh, it's using a display of flex. And when we use a display of flex, by default, the elements have a uh, align items of stretch on them. So what that align items of stretch is doing, if we come back down here, if I give this a background color of, let's just say steel blue for now, so it's nothing too bright we're gonna see that the, it goes all the way down to the bottom. So it can't really stick to, you know, it is stuck to the top, but that's because it, it doesn't have, it can't scroll down because then this would be like overflowing out the bottom of its containing block. And that's something that it's not going to do. So if you do have this set up as a flex or grid item and you're trying to use position sticky, you might have to do an align self start just to make sure that the elements height it, we're not stretching all the way down, that it's only the height of itself. And now what's going to happen is it's going to stick to when it hits that top of zero and it's gonna to stick to the viewport. But one thing with position sticky, unlike position fixed, is items will not escape out of their containing block. So see when it gets to the bottom of that red box, it's sticking in there and it's staying with it. So that is one thing that's really important to know. And when I'm saying actually with containing block in this case, if I take off the position of relative here, it's not going to change that behavior. Uh, so once again, if I scroll down, let's just make this a bit narrower, so uh, wider, I should say. We have a bit more scrolling room there, um, or actually, you know what I'm gonna do is really fast, bear with me. Let's just take these three paragraphs and duplicate them so we have more content to scroll. <laughs> there we go. So now when I get to the bottom of the page, it's still scrolling off. So position fixed is less to do with the containing block itself and just looking at the parent. So if the parent is the viewport, like it was here, or the body, I should say, um, then that's your navigation will just stick with the viewport in general. But if you have other elements that are inside of something, they cannot escape outside of that element. So if they're, you know, they're, it's in this div that it's part of, it's not gonna get out of there. So it sticks to the top, it will stay with it and then scroll off. And of course you can do some really cool stuff with that. And that's a really fun effect I find uh, to be able to do things like that. Now, a few really important things just before uh, we, we, we finish this video off. I was talking about containing blocks um, being set up when we were coming in and changing the position of a parent, right? 
who we, I said that if an element had a position of relative, it becomes the containing block or you know, a position of anything other than static. And that is true, but there are other things that can cause containing blocks to be created too. And sometimes to, you know, it, it's an unintended um, thing that you don't really want to have happen. Uh, and this is some of those gotchas that can come up. They're not too often, but they're really frustrating when they do happen. So what we're going to do just to sort of illustrate this a little bit is let's make this a position of absolute, just so we have um, something to work with. And it's absolute and it's in the top here. And let's just say that it has a width of 10 or I don't know, 20%, 25%, just so it's less wide than it was. But maybe I want that to be on the entire viewport. So I don't have a position of relative on here. And I have that set up and it's exactly where I want it to be. It's not perfect. Maybe we'll also say that this has a left of zero. I don't know why this isn't a realistic situation, but I just want to highlight these types of things that can happen. So you can see it's broken outside of that red box because I don't have the position of relative on the article with sidebar. But there's other things that can do it, like if I had a filter on here, and so I don't, I wouldn't necessarily do a grayscale on this, but say we had a filter on the, the parent, it's made everything grayscale, but it's also turned it back into being a containing block, and this is stuck within that area. And this doesn't only happen with filter, it also happens with transforms and perspective. Uh, so if you're doing like an animation, and I've definitely seen this happen where somebody puts an animation on something, like a hover effect, so you hover and then it moves, and it's positioned one way, and as soon as you hover, the child actually like jumps and moves because all of a sudden, as soon as that starts transitioning, it becomes a containing block, but it wasn't before, and it can be really frustrating. Uh, the other thing is if you are using something like container queries um, and other stuff like that, you have to use a container type. Um, you can also contain layouts. And if you're using a backdrop filter of blur as well. So there's a few like weird gotchas every now and then, but just know that if you're trying to do something and it can, it's not behaving the way you think of, uh, there might be something strange creating a containing block. You probably don't need to worry about it most of the time, but it's one of those things that like a filter on something just mucks you up and you get really frustrated. Uh, so I just, I do want to throw that out there. Uh, and actually this one's one of those weird ones where even if this was a position of fixed, um, you'll notice that it doesn't escape out and it doesn't scroll at all. It acts basically like a position of absolute and filters one of those weird things that can break a position of fixed. So I do want to throw that out there. So that can be really, really annoying that that happens. But usually if something's position fixed, it doesn't have to be nested in anywhere because it's really not related to that other content. If it's fixed to the viewport, it's just sort of a general thing. So usually in those situations, the solution is just to move it outside of whatever is causing the problem. Uh, and then you get your position fixed coming back. So there we have it, a bit of a crash course, quickly going over all of them. Uh, I hope you did enjoy this. If you do want those practical ways of using position absolute, but keeping things responsive, uh, you wanna watch that video, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome horror, Johnny, Tim, Simon, Michael, Andrew, and Web On Demand, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.